Hello everyone, my name is Holly and I work at the Columbus Public Library in Genealogy and Local History. This video is part of a series about Ancestry 101. Today we'll be talking about an often overlooked resource, the U.S. Federal Census Mortality Schedules. What are they? How can they help you with your genealogy research? And where can you find them using Ancestry Library Edition? When you look for an ancestor's date of death, you'll find that many states did not start to compile death records until the late 1800s or early 1900s. Alabama, for example, began keeping records in 1908, but Georgia did not start until 1919. So what other resource might help? Try the federal census mortality schedules information that was collected in the 19th century in 1850, 1860, 1870, and 1880. To answer the question, what are they? The mortality schedules give us information about the persons that died in the year prior to when the census was taken, starting on June 1st and ending on the following May 31st of the census year. For example, the 1850 mortality schedule records deaths that happened between June 1st, 1849 and May 31st, 1850. So how can they help you in your genealogy search? In addition to giving you four years' worth of information, the mortality schedules offer other insights into your ancestors' past, such as family names. Up until 1850, only the head of household was listed by name in the U.S. Federal Census. Here's an example of an 1840 census. Only the head of household is named. There were no names listed for anyone else living in the household. Other relatives like spouse, children, boarders, or even household help. But all four years of mortality schedules give the names, ages, sex, color, marital status, either married or widowed, birthplace, month of death, occupation, and disease or cause of death. This could be a real help when you're trying to fill in gaps in your family tree. This is an example for 1850. Second, the mortality schedules can be helpful in African American slave research. In both 1850 and 1860 schedules, some enslaved ancestors' deaths are recorded with the name, age, and place of birth. This kind of information is normally not found until the 1870 census. Third, sometimes a cause of death can provide insight into genetic diseases that may be inherited. Obituaries from that time can offer more information if a person was killed in an accident or was a victim of a crime. You might discover that a deceased ancestor had a foreign-born mother or father in the 1870 schedule like this. Under parentage was a place for the enumerator to mark whether the deceased father or mother were of foreign birth. The 1880 schedule asks how long the deceased person had been in the county where they had contracted the disease, if any, in the name of any attending physician. Now, where else, where else can you find records like these in the Ancestry Library Edition? Let's go there and find it. Go to www.cvlga.org, research it, Genealogy and Local History, and Genealogy Resources. 
goes down to Ancestry Library Edition. And on the home page, we'll go down to U.S. Census Records and click All. When we view all collections included in this search, it takes you to the bottom of the page and you scroll down and find the federal, U.S. Federal Census Mortality Schedules 1850 to 1885. So let's find an example. We'll choose the year 1880 for the state of Georgia. And we'll take a look at Muscogee County. You'll find there are 13 pages of deaths between June 1st, 1879 and May 31st, 1880. Let's make the screen a little bit bigger and go up to see the sixth one. The sixth entry on the list is for May Spark. She's a 24 year old married African American woman born about 1856 in Alabama, as were her parents. Her occupation is laborer, and she died in April of 1880 of dropsy of the heart. Now be prepared to come across what are now outdated medical terms in these mortuary mortality schedules. Dropsy is an old term for swelling of soft tissue due to accumulation of excess water. So Ms. Sparks' death may have been caused by edema due to congestive heart failure. She had been in Muscogee County for 18 months and was attended by Dr. Leitner. For those of you who are looking for 1890 or 1900 mortality schedules, the information was collected in both those years. Unfortunately, the 1890 census, including mortality schedule, was destroyed by fire. The 1900 mortality schedule was destroyed by an act of Congress. I haven't figured out, haven't come across why that was done. I'm still looking into it. So, take advantage of this information that you'll find in the mortality schedules. It might just help you break through your brick wall by leading you to obituaries, mortuary records, cemeteries, and probate records. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day. We are springing into summer learning at the Chattahoochee Valley Libraries, and the program you just attended is one of the ways you can earn completions. Just go to cvlga.org and look for Spring into Summer Learning. You can register yourself and your family online, and then start reading and attending our online events. That's all you have to do. We're giving away weekly gift certificates, and every completion you make enters you into a grand prize drawing for tablets, games, gifts, and more. Remember, you have to register to win. CVLGA.org, and we'll see you online again real soon.